one of the things I really appreciated about listening to your story and, and the story that Carrie shared is that there are cultural values that bind us together. And no matter where we come from and no matter how we were raised or by whom we were raised, there are core values that run among all of us. And I think the important thing is that role modeling that behavior and being that example that you shared. And, you know, I also wanted to sympathize with you that this is a tough question. It's a really big, tough question. It's not easy to answer. And knowing that all of you took a shot at it, and I, I'll be excited to find out some of the other ideas that you came up with, knowing that we all know that this value is true. We all know that it's correct and that it's pono, that we must, as a village, raise our children, that we must, in shared action and shared responsibility, own the outcomes of our young people and own, own the piece of their success. Why would we simply put our children into a school on one end of the spectrum and expect that they will magically come out fully formed and functioning adults on the other side. Where is the community's responsibility and investment in our young people at, at every age that they matriculate through at each point in which they need us? And so we say things like, oh yes, it takes a village to raise a child. Are we doing that? Are we doing that? And do we have the courage to do it together? Can we commit? Can we collaborate? And do we have that courage to be able to have the stick to itness that I heard the other day about keeping our moral imperative? And, and Carrie asked me a great question. She said, you know, what do you use to guide your decision making? What, what is it that you, that you use to keep focus on these kinds of things. And that is really the story of Hokupa'a and the name Hokupa'a, which is that fixed guiding star. For us, Hokupa'a is the success of our children is the most important thing. And everything we do, everything we decide, everything we design, everything we choose to take action on must be measured by that moral imperative. Is this the best thing for our young people? And when we approach things like celebrating the div diversity, we look at that as diversity of voice. Have we talked to all of the people of West Hawaii? Have we done a good job to seek out the diverse voices? Have we stopped and listened where we needed to listen. Because three years ago, I sat in a talk, one of the first times I ever heard Wally speak, and he said, seek first to understand. And I never forgot that he said that. So as we started on this journey of hokupa'a and wanting to create an entirely new culture around how we educate and care for and support the success of our young people in West Hawaii, our first imperative was to seek to understand and that we would raise the volume of the voices of our young people as part of equal stakeholders in all the decisions. As the owners and the bearers of the future of Hawaii, they must be part of this discussion. And we formed the Hokupa'a Regional Youth Council and asked representatives from each of 11 schools if those young people would give us their manao and share with us how do they envision the success of, of West Hawaii? How do they envision the success of themselves? What does that take? What does it look like? And their answers were profound as I knew that they would be. And they were different than the way that we would describe success for our young people. And I'll just take another minute to share with you what they said and hope that it echoes some of the thoughts of our young people here today. For them, success was being brave, being motivated, having a positive view of the future, feeling confident, feeling empowered, feeling as though they had the support of the community around them, 
feeling as if they knew what they needed to know or they knew how to get it. And that they felt that there was love, respect, equality, diversity, justice, fairness. This is how our young people describe success. And how much do we think about those things? And I think our educators work very hard to build character development and values into the curriculum that we know is, is so structured. But as parents, family, community, neighbors, just adults in the sphere of our young people, are we doing everything we can to give them that sense of community, respect, family, aloha, support, motivation, confidence, bravery, courage? Can we do more? And if we can do more, I ask all of you that are so incredibly dedicated to this process of Seeds of Peace and the work that Carrie and, and all of her peers are putting together that if you can put your heads together today and think about how, how do we as everyday people become just a little bit closer to heroes for the young people in our world. Thank you so much.